All right. Fantastic Four 2005. This film is very underrated. It's highly unpopular. Uh, I have to say that I am going to have an unpopular opinion when it comes to this film because it's very reminiscent of the 90s cartoon for me and that's very enjoyable. However, I do have some grievances. Let me get into the negatives first. Uh, the origins around Doom are changed, his power set, his skill set, all that's altered. However, all the characters do get their powers the same way from the, a solar flare, even though the circumstances surrounding that are different. I can't really complain about that too much. The Doom thing, that is kind of bothersome, but as far as the casting goes, Julian made a great Doctor Doom. I really enjoyed his performance, especially once he dons the costume, the Doom costume. And he's like, painful? I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed his, his sinister behavior. This movie, a lot of people complain this movie doesn't have much of a plot. Um, well... It's kind of for good reason, though. This character, this movie is character-driven. It's everything about this movie. It's simply character-driven. It isn't what Marvel tends to do. Is plot? It's kind of a lot of Marvel movies are guilty of shoehorning in a plot that has to do with the end of the world. This is simply a character-driven story by all the characters, and I found that exceptionally great especially now these days it's very refreshing uh i do have some problems with some of the casting not all of it michael chikla said it's perfect as thing he is fantastic absolutely you cannot do a better job i i don't believe you can do a better job than what's done here it's absolutely exceptional all the little things that go with his character like when he tries to eat, he ends up biting the fork. Uh, when his wife decides to leave him, oh, what a bitch. But when his wife decides to leave him and puts the ring down, he, he can't pick it up and he's fumbling around for it. It's very sad, very tragic, very powerful stuff. Uh, there's just all kinds of things with him. Little things that go in this, like having to rub his face with not the feather side, but the wooden side, just to get him to move and smack the shaving cream into his face. Um, there's, and the, but, uh, let me say, Jessica Alba is miscast. There's nothing wrong with her performance here, but she does not accurately represent her comic book counterpart. She should have blue eyes and the fairer, fairer, lighter skin tone, so that is a problem for me. Uh, Mr. Fantastic himself, it seems like they should have shot for an older person instead of someone as young. Their performances are great. They're absolutely great. Um, however, they, they're not as accurate as they could be to the comics. They do try to make the effort to at least dye Jessica Alba's hair. Uh, it looked to me like they kind of lighten up their, her skin tone. I'm not for sure on that. And as far as Mr. Fantastic, uh, they put the streak in his hair, but it wasn't as much of the white as you'd like. Uh, my only problem with Chris Evans as Johnny Storm is he doesn't have the boyish blonde, boyish blonde hair, but that's really a nitpick. All these characters come off 100% the personality they should have. You know, Reed Richards is more concerned about science than anything else. He's always in his head. Uh, Johnny's always a hothead. He's always a daredevil, um, a flirt, a jokester. The thing as this Beauty and the Beast, Grim Tell, this sad man, um, this Frankenstein, uh, and Doctor Doom's all about power, the hunger for power. All of them came off. Exactly as they should be. It's very reminiscent of the 90s cartoon. The power dynamic. The interactions between the family. The dynamic. The unit. The chemistry. The, it, it, almost every single line delivered too. 
It's just like somebody poking at somebody and it feels very natural, very organic. Everything between everything that unfolds just feels very organically delivered. Like there's it doesn't feel like the comedy's forced, it doesn't feel like the motivations are forced. It's not we have to try to save the world from being ended. It's doom, hunger and his hunger for power and his hatred for Reed and his jealousy, his envy, and, you know, the other, uh, like, it's very simple, actually, I mean, they get their powers, and because things aren't looking too good for the thing, you know, his life has gone to hell because of it, uh, Dr. Doom's life is going to hell because of it, uh, he's mad at Reed, and Reed's they make their debut. The way they showcase their powers, the way they discover their powers, it's very natural. Like the, the way they figure out how to use their powers too as defense mechanisms. Uh, are th They use their powers. They discover how to use their powers in moments that are perfect for it. I found all that fascinating. I really like seeing Stanley as the mailman man. I really like seeing him as the mailman. That was great. Um, if there's one thing I can say about it is, is that there's not enough. It's an hour and 40 minute, 45 minute run time. Doom is not as fleshed out as it could be. The action is very short. It's very over quickly. Uh, it's great action, but it's very short duration of action. And there should have been another 15 minutes adding in there to really amp up the threat that Doom is. He was very threatening in here, however, there were some times where I'm like, well, you blew that guy's chest out earlier. Why now is Sue only getting tossed against the wall by your powers? There are some things in there, little nitpicks that I have. But for the most part, I thought it was exceptionally well. A lot of people don't like this movie. They think it's bad, but I think it's very good. Uh, it's just short, fast, fun. Uh, if you really understand the Fantastic Four family dynamic, you can say that it is very accurately portrayed here on screen. The the humor too. It's while it's very family friendly. There's also some stuff in there that uh makes you think like like how. Thing, <laughs> how things supposed to have sex like that uh, Johnny also makes this comment Sue's like you really don't want to be on fire all the time do you and he says yeah absolutely well dude if you wanted that think about how would you ever have sex no woman's gonna want to jump on you while, <laughs> while you're flamed on but uh another thing Johnny when he figures out how to flame on it's at the perfect moment he just takes a leap of faith because he's got no choice. Even though Johnny is very dickish and stuff like that, very immature and childish, he really steps up and you see that he's a hero. Like on the first part of the bridge when there's a child in danger about to be killed by an explosion, he jumps in and covers her and takes takes the blast. Another uh, is when Doom fires a heat-seeking missile at Sue and uh, Ben and Johnny, and Johnny has no choice but to, uh, you know, try to get the missile to chase him instead of Sue. So he just jumps off the roof and figures out how to fly for the first time. And it's awesome. There are a lot of things in here that are pretty great. Doom, Doom's costume is exceptional. Uh, just the chemistry between the characters, man. And, it's like, and every line. Every line just feels organic. None of it feels like the forced humor that the MCU often has. Uh, the villain's motivations aren't just, I want to destroy the world for the sake of it. He really wants revenge and he wants to get at Reed for, you know, he's just jealous of Reed. But this, a lot of people don't like this film. I feel like it's overly picked on, like, this film's put down too hard. I think a lot of people should actually go back and rewatch it 
and make a, a fair assessment. However, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. My opinion is, I like it, man. This is better than a lot of the comic book movies out there. It's unfortunate, though, that this franchise was pretty much doomed. The, the sequel I'll do a review another time, and you'll see why. I'm sure you, I'm sure everybody already knows why, but I thought, I thought everything in here was pretty damn good. It's just a little bit too short. Doom doesn't get fleshed out enough as a big enough threat, even though he is very intimidating and imposing the way he is and they, he uses his, his smarts to tactically take out each one of them to has a plan for each one of the Fantastic Four that's very doom like behavior and Reed you know he uses science he uses he uses his brain to end the battle and that's very much like Reed Richards so the thing, too, the thing costume is, wow, very great. Uh, you couldn't have cast better. You couldn't have done it better. I'm not interested in seeing fan stick CGI thing or race change Johnny Storm. Uh, eventually, I will do a review on that movie. But uh, for the most part, I'm just not interested in it. Uh let me see. I took some notes here. Let's see if there's anything I missed. The Johnny thing. Uh, oh, yeah, the thing on the bridge. See, the, the, here's, here's an example of how organic the comedy is. When a guy is going to jump off the bridge and Thing is there and he gets scared by Thing, things like, hey, man, you think you got it bad? It's just like all the comedy in here is very naturally delivered. It, the jokes just bounce, they bounce off each other. The dialogue, it's very exceptional. I thought, uh, uh, and the joke about uh, when Johnny's being interviewed about Mr. Fantastic, and we heard he can expand any part of his atomy. Uh, atomy. <laughs> Sorry, he can expand any part of his anatomy. So that's a sexual joke in there, and, and he's like, "Oh, I, I personally found him to be a little limp." There's all kinds of things in here that are pretty cool with the way they use their powers, though. Like Mister Fantastic reaching for toilet paper, Sue turning invisible, trying to cover herself in the shower. Um, it's pretty funny how she, how she almost. Like, she appeared in her underwear when she was trying to undress to sneak past people. That that part, too, um, I don't know why she had to uh, undress and get invisible and try to sneak past a barrier. Because in the very next scene, it shows her, like, with her clothes, putting her clothes back on. And Mr. Fantastic and Johnny are with her. And she's like, don't ever make me do that again. I don't know why she had to do that in the first place because there were people right there around them uh, that didn't have to get naked and go invisible to get around whatever barrier. I'm a little bit confused by that, but the way they, like I said, the way they use their powers and stuff, all that's very great. Anyways, uh, I'm rambling here. Uh, <laughs> the music... And this movie was great. The action scenes were so-so. You didn't get a lot of them. You got a lot of humor that was very naturally delivered. The chemistry between all the characters, amazing. I do wish uh, somebody different was cast for, just, uh, for uh, Sue Storm and maybe somebody older for Mr. Fantastic, but their acting was great. Uh, just not very accurate character representations. More accurate than a lot of character adaptation. Uh, 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 ah, more accurate than a lot of people get portrayed in movies. For instance, Valkyrie being race changed. Like any race change. And here, Alicia the blind woman, she's race changed. Uh, and it bothers me. But it also kind of makes sense because she's trying to relate to things. And she's talking about being different and... Uh, 
course, she's black, you know, she's blind, too, so that's a double whammy right there. Uh, in At least to NPCs or whatever, that's like, you get double, you get double social justice points for that. Uh, but, anyways, I'd give this movie a 9 out of 10, easily. I know that's unpopular opinion, but, hey, man, you like what you like. And I'm not here to please everybody. So 9 out of 10. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Stay awesome. Rock on.